Welcome back to part two of Down Herf's interview with Hartman's Distilling and Buffalo Bourbon Enthusiasts. We hope you guys liked part one. Let's get right into the action in part two. Enjoy. We have another experimental in the works. Um, it's actually just sitting on our floor right now, finishing. It's got a couple weeks left, so you don't really want to finish it for more than six to eight weeks. Okay. That's what uh, a little bit of information that not a lot of people know, and that's why you get some that are way over finished and don't taste very good. Because they let them sit there for two years thinking it's, oh, it's just like aging it. No, no, it's not. Yeah, you get jammy and everything. Yeah, it's, it, you're just getting, after a while, it's just the tannins and the, the, the soot essentially is coming out of it. It's not the same. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. so we're working on one right now that we'll bottle, but then we probably won't release it until March or April. So we'll, we'll sit on it for a bit. And is that going to be a rum or... Uh, no, it's going to be another bourbon. Oh, okay. It's just a different finish. It's oh, a, that's cool. I can tell you. It's a Grand Marnier cask. Oh, oh that's oh. that'll be really... Hell yeah. Grand Marnier is some good orange cognac right there. Yeah, I, I have no idea what it'll taste like. But honestly, I thought the t- the stout was going to taste like shit, and it turned out to be the best one. Are you going to are, are you <laughs> going to bottle them in the 350s? Or, 375. Or yeah. the 375? Yeah. I think we're going to keep the experimental series in these 375s. Yeah. Um, we Do you think have, you'll ever bottle these in uh, full 750s? The stout did really well. Like, that was a banger. So that might happen. That might happen as a once I have an empty down there that me and my buddy Adam, one of our sponsors of our show, we were hanging out watching football, and we just crushed that thing. Oh, good to hear. You know what? Yeah, the one you gave me for my birthday? Yeah. I crushed it, too. It's yeah, I mean, it's easy to drink. The, <laughs> the stout, incredible. You know what? This is my third time tasting it now. I think it's even better the third time that I've already had. Like, drank a one, drank a pint, had a sample before, and now I'm on the third. He, he was a little controversial the first time, though, Justin. I you know what, though? You. I like the wine barrel one. The other one that you have coming, you know, that we'll get to, I like that one, too. It's good. And now, just for the people who aren't listening that don't know what the stout process is, do you want to get into that for a little bit? Just because, you know, there's always the layman who's just like, what the fuck is a stout? So it starts a, a type of beer, right? So we teamed up with Pressure Drop Brewery, which is actually right down the, the street from us in a way. It's right around the corner um, is where they brew their beer. Carl over there, great guy. In fact, he was just in the other day dropping back off the barrel because they, they just bottled their new release of Black, Alic- Black Alicious, which is the stout beer that they make. The, it, you know, they rest for nine months in, in that barrel. So it's a thicker uh, what is it? Is it? A, it's, Port, I think it's, it's definitely a a higher ABV. Yeah, yeah, like a like a like a Guinness type, like yeah, that type sure. of beer. Just so people know what the hell we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. it's like your 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 seasonal ale, right? Usually yeah. comes out during the colder months. It, it's like your Guinness, your thicker type of beer. There's yeah. nothing like a nice stout on a cold night. Absolutely, like a cigar. Yeah, that that's like my move. Winter winter comes, you want a stout and you want a rye, a nice mm. rye, in my opinion. So maybe we'll do, well, that's a good idea. Maybe we'll finish a rye in it. Ooh. Oh, oh. The brain Con, trust the wheels, here. Con the brain thing right here. here. <laughs> the wheels are churning now, oh, man. Down to her pick. Hey, this, this, <laughs> yeah, yeah. this is the barrel pick. I'm in. <laughs> Boom. I, I'd be down that for that. sounds good, doesn't it? That, yeah, oh. I think that would be a lot of fun. Oh. Something, yeah, money. something for the winter. <laughs> We'll see, but a um, little February action for the birthday. Yeah, sheesh. I mean, considering <laughs> like there's like 50 of our like immediate friends' birthdays in February. It's true. February is a horrible month. month. My mom, my grandma, everyone. It's like the best month, but the worst month. The shortest, and it's the shortest. Yeah, it's the midgets of the months. The midgets of the <laughs> month. It's the Caleb of the months. The short kings. We co- the short king. <laughs> there we go. Short king February. <laughs> That's a title I wear uh, very proudly, humbly Listen, as well. <laughs> one of our one of our best clips is you trying to reach that top shelf, buddy. He couldn't get it. I can't. I need we a gotta step get stool. him a little step stool. You got to get the grabber. <laughs> <laughs> Not with those bottles. I don't want to. I don't want to risk right. it. You, you don't right. want to be dropping Thomas Handy on the ground, man. We just wear big gloves. You'd be all right. There we go. Like Jack Kelly. Yeah. Always sunny. <laughs> like a mitt. I love that show. <laughs> Uncle Jack. <laughs> Nobody look! Nobody look! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So cigars uh, and rye. You're in Florida now, right? As yeah. well? Yeah, we just started distributing Florida uh, in September. I was just down there with the wife, took her to a Florida State game. Mm. Seminoles. Yeah, I'm an alum. Oh, uh, no oh, shit. You went to Florida State? I did, yeah. What year, what year did you graduate? Oh, six. Oh six, yeah. Okay, all right. It's like the Chris Ricks years. 
Everything goes by football, though. Yeah, I was, yeah, <laughs> was going to say, it's not the EGA manual era. No, no. Not yeah. the was, what, 13? Yeah. yeah. Not, not was that, that 12? So 12, 13? Deion Sanders going to be your guy's next head coach? Not mm-hmm. after he stole that recruit from us. I mean, he probably would bring him with him. If, th- then yes. <laughs> I'd sign up. I'd, I'd sign up for that. Coach Prime. <laughs> they said he was going to do college football this year, didn't they? No, he's currently a coach for uh, Jackson, Jackson State. State for Jackson State High it's School, a, right? No, no, it's a historic black college. Yeah, okay. And he's got like five star recruits coming to. Is yeah. that like, like where a, he goes on his rants about he, guys being on their cell phones and shit? Yeah, yeah. But I, I think he also delivered a speech saying he's not leaving there. He yeah, yeah until, until he someone Get offers. Out. Yeah, yeah. until it's SEC cool money. Yeah. So South Carolina comes down. <laughs> so uh, what was it? Auburn is Go like Cox, rumored because he's Go like Cox. a big. Uh, Auburn's a huge contender right now because he's a like an Atlanta sports legend, and then because obviously he was drafted with the Falcons, and he he's Deion Sanders. You know, I honestly watched um, some highlights of Deion Sanders earlier today, which is really ironic. We're talking oh. about Deion Sanders. Yeah, I sent that clip. Yeah. Uh, what the Yankees? Yeah, where the he was, fight, like where he, uh, Bo Jackson under, yeah. and yeah. like inside the park. Oh, home. That one's solid. Yeah, I, I love Bo. I, that I, dude's arm was nuts. Did you ever look up uh, Bo Jackson in the NFL? He only played four seasons. Yeah, yeah, because he had an injury. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Him bad. Pulled his hip. I, I, I thought that was kind of weird because I, I, I had never known that. Like you, you hear Bo Jackson, he's like an NFL legend, but he played four years. He was yep. a freak of an athlete. He would break bats over his like knee, and then he'd go out and run on the field. Just it's a no wonder he had over. injury problems. Did you ever so, try and bi- uh, break a bat over your leg? At least he didn't break it over his head without the helmet. No, he did. Yeah. Well, he did have it over that. He did it over that. <laughs> well, at least the helmet. At least he had a helmet on. Yeah. So <laughs> Bo Jackson CTE. is like widely considered the most gifted athlete of a probably like in American history. I think people yeah. would say like he could easily have. If he had enough time to like expand his career, he could have probably been the Hall of Famer in both sports. Yeah. That's how good he was. Has his... any other athlete ever played two professional sports at the same time? Him Michael De- Jordan. Him and Deion. Him and Deion Sanders. Deion. Oh. Deion Sanders. Deion's schedule he, was nuts. He was, he was playing the MLB till football camp started. No, no, no Played while he was in yeah. football. Yeah, he okay. did yeah, 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 yeah. The, Yankees, the Yankees would fly him by, by a helicopter to their games yep. from like the NFL stadium. Same yeah. thing with the Braves when he played yeah. for the Braves. Okay. It was but, like real life Space Jam, where he comes in the helicopter and just gets out of the plane. <laughs> I was gonna Deion's, say Michael Jordan, but that wasn't at the same time because no. uh, I think he took a little time off. And yeah, then, well, that was Jordan was only in AAA. Yeah, yeah. he did. Well, you see this a lot now. You see a lot of these like high draft football picks that are also like stud baseball. Players. Well, there's like uh, Russell, Mahomes, Mahomes, um, and uh, Russell Wilson, Russell Kyler Wilson. Murray, Kyler, Kyler Murray. I guess was an amazing. Was he drafted by the Yankees? Kyler, uh, Kyler Murray first was round, Oakland in the Oakland first first, first yeah. round. Yeah. He, he, in baseball, the only picks that matter in baseball one through Ted. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yep. The, the arguably the first round, but like the top guys. Yeah, the, ten. Are really, the, eleven all that, to fifty. It's just well, ceremonial. They, you never know. Well, they do like ten rounds in a baseball draft. So no, it's they, crazy. they do like fifty. Yeah, it, it's insane. They do yeah. so many rounds. They you got well, like high schoolers drafted in like the set. You have no exactly, idea yeah. how this kid's gonna turn out. <laughs> my my uh, buddy's little brother was drafted by uh, like the Dodgers at the age of like fourteen. Jeez. I played a kid yeah. in high school. He was drafted by the Oreos, and he never just yeah. He the Oreos, never, well, yeah. the Oreos. Dude, I sat on the bench in we, high school. No, and it was is, that, awesome. is that Nabisco, dude? <laughs> the, yeah. He's in that Nabisco league, dude. No, the, the all cookie league. The Orioles. I was five foot two. You said on Oreos, a team. bro. Brett was drafted by Fig Newton. I was, <laughs> dude. I had I had the mushroom cut. I was wearing Draco jeans to the. Uh, the Talk yeah. to me when you're drafted by Nutter Butter. All right. <laughs> no, listen. Caleb was drafted uh, by the Keebler Elves. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Short Kings. Got hey, him. Short Kings. He was Got playing uh, at the intermissions. <laughs> <laughs> I played on the 45 foot like bases. You he was still team. the shortest player on the team. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gio, you know my dad listens to the show sometimes. He's like, man, you guys are always ragging on that Caleb guy. <laughs> I want to see uh, Caleb run against Mr. Freeze. <laughs> we'll give you uh, probably a three force lead. I don't know if he can catch me, man. You fast? Not, I mean, I'm short. I'm, I'm right. <laughs> he sounded so he's defeated. Quick, quick, dude. You he know what? So I've defeated. seen those clips of Mr. Freeze run, and he's beating some fast guys. Dude, so. he's Olympic, Olympic fast. He, I don't know where he gets that speed from. No, what's the? Is it the Nationals that have like the weird mascot race? Every team does it now. The uh, Bison's got like the the celery, the, the celery, but the, the most famous one. Uh, they got the pierogies in Pittsburgh. 
Yeah. It, it's like the like is it the Nationals? They have like the presidents that run. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I want Caleb to race like Thomas Jefferson from that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, TJ, I'm taking you down, buddy. <laughs> Little Abraham Lincoln. Four J- scores and seven years ago. I want Can him you to be, run uh, Andrew Jackson for it? <laughs> Can you run the bases faster than Washington cut down the cherry tree? How big is the cherry tree? That's the question. Not that big. Do we Key know? Question. Do we know? <laughs> it's not that big. If it's not that thick, I might be able to beat him. Look it up. Uh, the circumference. <laughs> the circumference of the it. circumference of the, the cherry. Like tree. a middling yep. cherry tree. We're talking. He's gonna have some bad searches on Google too. <laughs> well, first, uh, like like an all, eight foot cherry tree. <laughs> yeah. Was it a sapling? First of all, I don't even know how to spell circumference. So. Oh God! Circumcised. Yeah. Plus well, some. good thing it good thing it comes up when you like Bruh. type the first words. So, but yeah, actually, legend has it that George Washington never cut down a cherry tree. That was just urban myth. Well, there was no. Urban Is this spots. like when you failed the citizenship test? <laughs> okay, so we had uh, Caleb take the uh, U.S. Immigra- All right, immigrations All right. and customs test to get in the United States, and Caleb failed. Yeah, how'd wow. you uh, sneak back in here? <laughs> You know the the name bo- of that episode was Caleb gets deported. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the borders on like the Canada U.S. side very lax, very lax. Not for old people. Not for old people. But actually, you actually, know- you know what? Let me pull these up. I'll pull up a couple questions for you, man. All right, cool. Uh, I, and I hold just on. Got- you got to take you got to take it off the screen there. No, I am. That's why I'm going to do it on my phone. Wait, I'll- and hold on. I actually, you know what? I could round the bases faster than George Washington could cut down a cherry tree because. They can grow 25 feet wide. So, easy. Easy money. So, fully grown cherry tree. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> easy money. All right. <laughs> I'm talking a two foot wider here. Maybe, are we talking? Eh, no. Yeah, two foot wider, I could do it. No. no. I could do it. No. Back then, those dudes were strong, strong. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, like, but it's I, like five I, swipes. I thought yeah. George Washington was a little kid when he did it. Well, a strong uh, kid. Mm. He, he was tall. Tall. Yeah, he, he was, was tall. tall. He had, wooden, he had wooden teeth, though, too, so, you know. He, I, bite, he bit the cherry tree down. <laughs> that's, that's why he had wooden teeth. That's why. Rio Grande. He uh, made, legend has it he made cherry wheat with Sam Adams back then. Ooh. Ooh. You know, legend has it. Rested rye and cherry wheat. Actually, My is favorite it, beer at Buffalo Brew Pub. Is really? It, minus the Buffalo Brew Pub. Sorry, <laughs> Buffalo Brew Pub. Isn't there... But it brings me back to you. All right, Brett. 21 years old. Isn't Ready? There, wait, hold on. I got one more thing. Isn't there that Lear's... Dude, Bushmills. Isn't there... <laughs> Brett would probably know this one. Maybe you would too, Justin. But isn't there like Lear's Applejack, which is supposedly a brandy from like George Washington's estate? Uh, George Washington had the first distillery in the U.S. And I... Uh, yeah, I heard that like Lear's Applejack might like be from his... You know, I don't plantation know. or whatever. Sounds like a great marketing ploy. I yeah, don't, it probably could be. I don't know if that's the oldest um, mash bill that is running right now. I want to say Nelson Greenbrier is the oldest mash bill running right that's now. That's actually not too bad either. The whiskey? Yeah, yeah they, not too bad. The two guys that brought that back were the great-grandsons of Nelson Greenbrier. And... They didn't even know that their grandfather was a distiller until they went to a historically prominent town for Nelson Greenbrier. They saw it on a sign, did a lot of research, and then they started it back up. And they also sourced from MGP, but their whiskey is made from the original um, mash bill that they had. And or they found and a like great archives. price on it too. Great price, thirty five ish bucks. I was say I've seen it around yeah. thirty, so great price. You served in the military, right? Yeah, still do. Oh well, these fucking questions should be fucking easy. All right, I'm gonna fail. <laughs> no, <Let's> you're go. <laughs> not. <laughs> what do you you think you got them? Uh, yeah, oh yeah. You think you got him for sure? Right, no, it, oh yeah, you're a law he was, guy. He too. was a law guy. He'll he'll know. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> I had some college. No, no I didn't have all college. Should we go back and forth to have a little competition between these two? We'll Let's do go. it like best of five. Best, best, best of five? Let's yeah. go. Well, I, I say, think you got to rotate ding. them. You have to rotate them. <laughs> uh, oh, absolutely. Because you yeah. can't give them the same question. Cause, you know what? Yeah. I might need another cigar, too, so I might have to dig up in that humidor because I'm well through this one. All right. Ready? Who wants the first question? Rock, paper, scissors for it. Age before beauty. All right. Cool. Not that beautiful either. So Okay. You, let's go. What do you call the first Ten Commandments of the Constitution? Ten Commandments? The Bill of or Rights? Amendments, I'm sorry. The, the Bill of Rights? <laughs> what do you call the first Ten Amendments of the Constitution? The Bill of oh, Rights? Got it. Cool. Good job. 
Easy one. Okay. Moses over here. Okay. <laughs> all, right, all right. All right. All right. Curveball. <laughs> Biblical as fuck. These questions are so stupid. One nation under God, stupid. motherfucker. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm wasting my time asking you this. He's got all these. I don't know, we, man. We, I, no, I'm scared. <laughs> we, elect a, we elect a president for how many years? Four years. Okay. He's got all the easy ones. <laughs> oh, this, is, this was Caleb the whole he time. He poppy nonamus over here. <laughs> who you does, give him all the easy ones. <laughs> who does a U.S. senator represent? Uh, state? Yeah. Yeah, all the people of the state. Yeah. Yep. I'll give you that. Why does the United States flag have 13 stripes? It was the first uh, 13 states, right? Yeah. Colonies. So colonies. 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 <laughs> we'll count that. We'll count East it. Coast. We'll count it. We'll count it. It was colonies. During the Cold War. Okay. Ooh. All right. Ooh, I Ooh. don't like the start of this question, Ooh. dude. Okay. Russia. <laughs> what was the what was the main concern of the United States? Oh, communism. Bingo, baby. Bingo. Dude, you would have failed this. You would have failed this one too. Russia communism, same Dude, thing. Dude, we're crushing it. <laughs> you guys are gonna go perfect twenty, I think. If I do the full Wait, there's twenty. There's twenty of these? Dang it. Oh, <laughs> we're, oh, we're, doing five. Five. Fuck. we're only doing tapping it. out. Uh who we at? We at you, Justin? We are. What was the one promise you make when you become a United uh, United States citizen? I I don't know. I don't know. These, they're like multiple choice, but this is definitely not the quiz that we gave Caleb. Yeah, this is was, definitely that's a hard one. this is not the quiz that we gave you. Yeah, I'll this, do a I, guess. Want to do a guess? Okay, ready. I'll, I'll a, hold the a, Constitution. A, oh. not. Defend the Constitution and the laws of the United States. <laughs> well, it's not a <laughs> disobey the laws of the United States. Give up loyalty to other countries. Never travel outside the United States. Those are actually the four. I don't know what the fuck that is. It's definitely. Well, hold on, hold on. What's the middle? What one? was the verbiage on it though? Yeah. No, the, it's the third one for sure. Disobey the laws. No, oh, no. What's the verbiage of the? But they're all question? in negatives. They're all not. Yeah. What's no. the verbiage of the question? What is one promise you make when you become a United States citizen? A. Not defend. The Constitution and laws of the United States. B, give up loyalty to other countries. It, that, C, disobey the laws of the United States. And D, never travel outside okay, of the United so States. I miss her with yours. It's yeah, definitely B. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. The, the other ones are silly. Yep. Yeah. yeah. This is this I mean, is not the same. To, to the Caleb's of the world, this might be tough. <laughs> what are two travel. rights in the Declaration of Independence? Two rights? Two rights. On. Oh Jesus! Oh. This is the one that got Caleb. I know this one got Caleb. Wait, is this a multiple choice one? Yes, it is. But, well, there, you, but you never but, read me the multiple no, choice. No, this answer. one wasn't multiple choice. No, it wasn't there's multiple choice. But there's answers. three total answers. But if you give me any two, I'll accept it. The two rights um, to the Bill of Freedom of Speech. No, it's no. to the Constitution. No, that's the Bill of Rights. See, that's what tripped Declaration that's of Independence. What, I'm sorry, Declaration of Independence. That's what tripped me up. What people, what they signed. Mm, well, yeah, you don't got me on that. You got me on that one. Are, are Life, you... liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. See, Oops. that's what tripped me up. We're in a police state, so we're good. <laughs> and I'm part of it. All right, here you go. We're on question eight. We're only doing ten. Okay. And so there could be a clear winner here now because he got one wrong. All right, come give on. Him, give him all the What are ones. two cabinet level positions? Secretary of State um, and Secretary of Commerce. Uh, it's Secretary of State and Secretary of Labor. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm... all right, all right. Does that count? You both right. missed that's one. Is that like a half point? Like... Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> I'm gonna give him a half point on that. So oh, this doesn't go on. Tiebreaker. Uh, <laughs> you, you, my man started spewing some crazy shit over here. It hurts my heart. All right. In what month do we vote for a president? November. All right. That some of these are stupid, man. Well, All right. Tenth the question. College. All right. Ready? <laughs> this is January. four to the win by one half point. Okay. What did Susan B. Anthony do? She, uh... <laughs> she wrote the uh, song. Our national anthem. I'm going to go with a no on that one. No. Did she sell the flag? God, I thought that was Betsy Ross who sold the flag. Betsy Ross. No, I no. think... Uh, Susan B. Anthony, no, she didn't write the... She's on the coin. No, I, I don't want to spoil it. I'll give you for the chance for the steal. This is for the steal. 
gave the or she marched to give the women uh, women the right to vote. Uh, that, that puts him up one half point. He yeah. wins. Women's well suffrage. Well yep, yeah. yep. Women. Yep. Women's suffrage. Uh, I, I hate to say it, man. I know. You know what? And I just saw Justin. Sure. Give it to me. <laughs> you need to leave. You're deported. All right, me and Justin Fine. on the deported couch over the here. The deported couch. <laughs> but I'm we're pissing just... on that everybody on my way out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're gonna fucking ship this entire couch out. <laughs> America, uh, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, before we go on with anything else, you guys aren't ready for your cigar review, are you? Um, or we can do a, uh, you know, a. Our stories of the week, Patrol Gone Wild. Uh, I didn't even have any of that, dude. You, you know what? You told us to get a story. Yeah, for the after her. Or do you want me to uh, put out what we got for BBE coming up? Yes. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about that. Oh, and we also talk have another that. drink t- thing t- coming up, too. Yeah, we have another drink. Yep. Um, yeah. yeah, there's a so drink far. coming up. Well, we don't have to do a Patrol Gone Wild. I, I want to do the cigar review, though, because this is a cigar review that I feel is worth doing. Good. This is awesome. Not yet. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll do start, that at the very end. Let's do a, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll get my yes, I want to talk to Brett. Brett wanted to talk about things coming down the pipeline, which I'm always excited about as a, uh, not since the beginning collector of the BBE, but since I've known you, I, I try to get all of the bottles. I, I, I love the picks. They're always really good, and they're always something I look forward to. And we're glad. Um, Plus, I like the exclusiveness of it. That's the thing. Uh, There's a collectible. <laughs> if the word collect can be all. yes, if the word collectible <laughs> can be involved in any way, I'm in. Collectible to a point until we drink through them all, right? And then people are like, ah, I wish I didn't th- drink through that. Which well, that's fine. I still have the bottle. I still have the bottle. That's the thing. Uh, we we want people to keep it in Buffalo, keep these picks in Buffalo, and share them amongst all of our members. And when we can team up with a local vendor, a local distributor. Uh, a local establishment like Hartman's. Um, we want people to promote and support the businesses, right? So when we do our picks, we don't always select a pick or a barrel if we try them. We do turn down a lot of picks. Um, we've turned down probably six in the last 10 that we actually tried. Um, so now that we do have, I want to say, four picks coming up just from BBE um, in the future, uh, we have an Old Elk 9-year weeded barrel proof that we're going to come out with. That's going to be within the next few weeks. I, I heard about this one. I am absolutely excited for this. Yep. It's going to be 100 and... Big Old Elk guy. It's delicious stuff. I uh, didn't start drinking Old Elk instead, until you guys did that uh, Pappy Von Miller. Yep. Which um, is awesome. Greg Metz is the head distiller over there, or master distiller over there. He came from MGPI, um, and he's putting out great product out of Colorado. Um, those are one of those brands that not a lot of people know about, just like Hartman's. Um, and we're going to see a lot more products like that come out that are actually favorable and wanted more than a lot of the off brand things that people do. Um, we're doing a great job. We're doing a nine year weeded, uh, barrel proof pick, uh, with global, uh, out of, uh, Sheridan Harlem. Those guys are awesome. Nick over there does a great job with his barrel program. Uh, That's who we did the Hartman's pick with. Whiskey Nick. And, yeah, he's he's very knowledgeable on his whiskey program. He doesn't save bottles for people once they go on the floor. If you're there and you find something that's allocated, you can pick it up. Uh, For this one, it's 114 bottles. That, Like I said, it's going to be coming out in about two weeks from the state. Um, That is 116 proof. Uh, there's a sister bottle coming out with that one. It's not a BBE pick. It's a six year, uh, rye that they're doing just through uh, global group. Then global is also doing a McKenzie's rye pick. Then next year on our docket through RBT roaming bison tavern. Um, he got us a line on a Sazerac rye pick. It's going to be a six year rye. it will be about 200 something bottles coming out. I want to say January, February timeframe. This is your second Saz pick, right? Yep. The last one was the uh, Ryan Fitz Magic. Yep. That which one was also was up amazing. there. Great can't, bottle. Can't wait to see what the logo and the sticker is going to be for that one. Oh, that yeah. one's going to be dope. Um, right. We're going to we're gonna try to do an event with that one to where it's going to be 200 and something bottles. That's usually what the yield is for those. Um, the Ryan Fitz Magic one was one of our fastest sellers ever. I want to say it was like 20 seconds. <clears throat> so this one's going to 
go fast with the uh, event that we got that we're planning out right now. And then we have a old Forester single barrel barrel proof pick coming out. That was just selected. I want to say today or yesterday. That one comes out probably March. So we who's only do that, who's that through. Uh, through global as well. So all these are through global. RBT and global is for the sand. Do you guys take the trip with them when they do these barrel picks? Uh, a lot of the times they send us um, actual like samples. samples. If we don't like the samples, we send them back, and then they send us more samples. And when you guys do these things, like is it like you and Aaron hanging out at his house, and you guys are just hanging out, yep. shooting the shit, tasting the shit? Yeah, we go to the or we go to global and hang out with Nick. We talk about the whole kind of same thing as Hartman's. Um, but if we if it doesn't live up to mine and Aaron's palates, and we do disagree on a lot of things when we actually sample these things, we talk about if it's going to be favorable within the group, is it sellable, stuff like that. Um, we only do 12 picks a year. Um, we don't want to oversaturate the market, especially with a lot of people within our group are more on the beginning side of uh, the whiskey um, and bourbon kind of enthusiast aspect of it. So we understand what we want to try and taste we don't want it to be astringent we don't want it to be below par and if we pick it we like it naturally by ourselves and for ourselves so if people do go along with it and love it that's great so that's what we have on the docket coming up we have more picks that get sent to us weekly um if aaron likes it he's like hey try this and i'll try it and i'll sit there i'll be like hey these are my notes um i don't know if we want this or if we do want it. Hey, let's try this. And and if Nick's on board, he's usually on board with us on that one. We also work with Global Group at the McKinley store down in the South Towns. Um, but yeah, it's uh, a great... Single barrels are becoming one of the newer allocated like type of things in the bourbon industry. Well, uh, what's nice about them is once they're gone, they're gone. They're gone, yeah. yeah. and So you can never replicate that. It's great. Because so no two no two barrels are the same. Yeah. No. Um. And when whenever we do a pick, we usually drop one off to Justin for the barrel room. So if a BBE member does want to go and try out a bottle and they didn't get it, they're able to go there or they're able to go to Nickel City and try it out and enjoy it, even if they didn't get the pick from the store. Yeah. So Brett, to jump in, what's the uh, more obscure picks you got in the line? Like something that. New York hasn't got yet. Like so, for us, in the, the trend before it's the trend in the area here, just on the docket that we have coming up, the Old Forester single barrel. That's very new to New York State. Okay, uh, the ones that we that brought, we kind of brought to the area and kind of bumped up the sales in the area is Wilderness Trail stuff. Definitely, um, I would say I've noticed that a lot more. Maybe yeah. just seeing the bottle. Yeah, um, we did a the Rick and Morty 20 fuck 2020. That was the first uh, wilderness trail pick that we did here. That one went pretty well. Uh, there were some bottles that sat on the shelf after a while, but once people drank it and enjoyed it, sales for wilderness trail kind of skyrocketed in the area global. They brought in their, the full lineup of uh, wilderness trail. We did a weeded with them. And then the two Rick and Morty um, rise here. We also did a few other ones. Uh, the bubblicious pick with, I was uh, trying to hunt that bottle. The bubblicious. I, yeah. I can't find it. Yeah, it's gone. That one, I was on the pick team with uh, Jeff March when we went down to Kentucky and picked, I want to say it's like 13 barrels. When we him. tried that here, the way those, uh, the way the yeast fermented, man, I mean, it, like right on the nose, it yeah. was bubblicious gum. It, it was pretty amazing. It was the unique, way that the- different, and all, there's a, a lot of different palates within everyone. So when you have a majority of the people saying, Hey, that's something I never expected to get, and they tried and they loved it. That's awesome. Yeah. And so, Justin, what's your favorite BBE pick that you get them? You have? Does he have them all? No, oh, they're probably drank. But right he's now, had but them yeah. all, right? I've tasted a bunch. Uh, my favorite was actually the very first one that uh, I ever had. It was the Four Roses um, single barrel pick. Uh, it was it was Smash- the Table Breakers. Yep, it's Table Smash Smashers. Yep. Okay. I, it was. It was phenomenal. It was something that it was like a cherry bomb, and we we had it on a back patio with a cigar at my wife's uncle's house, and I was like, I was in heaven. You know, it was like this is phenomenal, and that that's the what got me onto single barrel picks. We didn't we, Hartman's hadn't done one before then. Like we got to do this. Yeah, like it's true that these barrels taste so different. Once in a while, you'll get something so unique. I and I fell in love with the single barrel pick ever since. And now it's it 
right now is where the time frame where you get the BTAC lineup getting released. A lot of all the allocated stuff gets pushed, and a lot of people do raffles in New York State. Um, I hate York, that shit. Well, um, New York State is kind of cracked down on it. So, um, like Nick from, or not Nick from Noble, Global Root, uh, Noble Root, uh, Cal McGinty. Uh, yeah. He has a raffle coming up uh, November 19th. You just walk into the store, he gives you 10 tickets. You're able to put into um, kind of like the uh, running for barrel or bottles that you want to buy. Um, there's no purchase necessary on those ones. Um, and then you're able to buy it at a fair market price for for him. He just got onto the scene for a liquor store. Um, he's doing a phenomenal job over there on Main Street. I patronize it a few times. I'll say the guy is very nice. He's, he's, he's very always nice. there. He's, yep. he's, he's always there, and he's really cool. He's like, yep. man, if you got any questions, talk to me, man. Yep. And, you know, he puts everything out, puts it all at a fair price. Yep. Throws it right on. The, I mean, usually the allocated stuff, he puts it all right on the shelf. First person in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No one can bitch about it. Either, but you get so. these goddamn bourbon groups. They post that it's there. That's and gone. You get fucked. It's that's gone. what. It, that's it, what it sucks gone. about the bourbon hunt. That is they, what sucks uh, when the groups post. Because hey, as soon as it's posted, here, it's gone. Hey, it's here. They got the bourbon hunters. They know when the deliveries are, and they. Well, I'll give you a good small tidbit. E. H. Taylor Barrel Proof just dropped this week. So nobody's going to hear this for about two weeks. So if you guys run out to stores and find it. Um, I'm be, hunting uh, antique series right now. Well, that's going to be hard. I just came <laughs> it's not out just yeah. yet. I said I'm hunting it. I didn't say I was like expecting to get it. <laughs> Brett hit you with it. Yeah, good fucking luck. <laughs> that's what that was. Hey, we, on, we hey, got, we, on the hunt. We got lucky last year. We got the uh, the Thomas Handy, which was fantastic. It's like, a great uh, we sat on that bottle for so long. Almost the whole year. Yeah, it's a almost, phenomenal rye. Oh, almost a year. It's actually one of my favorites in the antique line. It's actually my favorite in the actine, actine, uh, antique. antique line. Um, now, but it's uh, they put out a solid product. Buffalo Trace does that all the way through. Um, there's not many misses that they have. Um, but they are releasing a single barrel project coming out it's the second iteration of it it's like a hundred and it's the largest they they're doing thirty thousand barrels they usually do 170 different bottlings and you can rank them from a to f if you want to in the last one single oak single oak project okay. sorry yeah yes yeah. uh, thank you um uh, but they are releasing thirty thousand barrels into that that from that program soon that I think is next year. Are they going to be in the three seventy fives again? Yep. Okay. Um, but it's going to be a wider array of things, so it could be up to three hundred different barrelings. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Those those are hard to find when they come out. Those Let's go. those used to sit on the the shelves a lot, right? Uh, but right. they were like fifty five ish bucks. But right. it's one of those things. It's like a single barrel, so you're going to try it. If you don't like it, then yeah. I may have borrowed some of the verbiage for our label experimental. <laughs> hey, hey, borrowed. borrowed. Hey. It's a good homage there's to that. There's a beautiful label and beautiful. <laughs> hey, you can't copyright a word, right? <laughs> that is true. Well, that is true. <laughs> Just a single. But no, like it's Hartman's experimental. People are understanding <laughs> that single barrels are the the wave of the future now. Um, oh, hundred. And... Anytime I see a single barrel. It's a guarantee you got to buy it yeah, because you don't know how Caleb long they're going to last. Caleb just brought this up the other day. We were doing an episode. He's like, you know, since so Caleb works in a liquor store. So when he says that he sees the word single barrel, he just buys it now. Yeah, ha I have to well, because they don't last long. If you don't even want to buy it, a lot of stores, they have one cracked open so you can try it. And if you like it, then you can buy it right there. There's a lot of stores are sitting on single barrels case on case on case. They deal on volume, so I got to find some of these stores. They're like Amherst, all, liquor know. store, hundred percent. They they're sitting on probably ten single barrels that they're wait the buy. one in the Wegmans or yeah on right. Amherst Street yeah. yeah on Amherst Street yeah all right I know where I'm shopping they they're solid on their price point too like that's what me and Aaron said in the first uh, podcast. Well, you're the it, second person to tell me that with them. What was it? Uh, Max from Rocky was saying there. Yeah, he shops yeah. there. Yeah, it, if you deliver good prices and don't fuck over a customer we want to work with you guys that's, that's that's our biggest thing i agree 100 percent because like that's one thing i like about hartman's like you said you can actually expand your palate and decide if you like there's nothing worse than spending a bunch of money on something you think is shitty yeah like and you will always remember it and you will detract it 
any chance you get. Oh, it's overrated. But like you get to try it, like, oh, that's not that bad. Like then you go somewhere you're like, uh, that's like seventy dollars a pour or something like that. You're like, nah, fuck that. I'm gonna, you know, get something different. Yeah. But when you make it affordable to everyone, you really allow people to enjoy their experience and we want everyone to enjoy and get to try these wonderful spirits because that's what they were originally intended for. Just like a like, cigar. Hey, yeah. I want you to try the cigar. It's a banger. Like, hey, that's I have I this am. great I'm a big cigar barrel. guy. I have a great, I have a great bottle from a great barrel. You need to try this, and then you have a good memory sharing it with your buddies. Well, what do we got? We got one more pour, right? That's right. We got one more pour, and then we'll start wrapping up, and we do. We'll figure this stuff it. out. Mm-hmm. I'm ready for this last one. This the one wine, I, I haven't had the wine yet. You never tried this one? Nope. It's good, man. Nope. For, it's good. First time. I uh, I did the I did the stout. I'm pretty excited for it. Thank so. you, brother. The wine one, I liked it a lot. Yeah. So I hope you guys do as well. Jerry, you want to rinse your mouth out a lot. I did. For this one. Good. I did. And yeah. I've been I've been sitting here patient. Take a little <laughs> take a little water sip here. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Four four bottles today. Well, there's a all fifth from Hardens. There's a fifth one, but we'll keep it for the after the herf. The after the after the after, after, after herf. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Herf after dark. <laughs> the after and, uh, dark show. That's where what, it gets real weird. What uh? <laughs> what uh? What winery Let's did you work with, uh, Justin? <laughs> so we worked with um, Arrowhead Spring Vineyards uh, down. Just out of Lockport. Is that lo- uh, local? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. And the cool story about this, this is really cool. So one of our production uh, individuals, her name's Molly. She used to be like the head person over there. So she did all, ran the whole show, wanted to move on from wine, wanted to get a different experience, started working at Hartman's. Um, it's still, you know, on very good terms with, with uh, the vineyard. And she actually picked this barrel because she's like, I personally picked the barrel i made the two the two casts were in it she's like we're what some of our best wine we've ever produced one was won an award across the nation so she went there she picked the barrel for us and it was her idea I'm like all right let's do it let's get a nice barrel on here and um we felt you know we, we polished it i think this one was a six week let me grab it let's get the specifics on it but it's a it's a cab franc barrel from uh from arrowhead um vineyards and it was, hold on, it's right here. Twice used, 2017 and 2019 for a Cabernet Franc. Okay. Uh, and it was the 2019, I believe, that won like one of the national awards. Um, yeah, so we uh, polished it in it for six weeks. And uh, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. It definitely, just right off the, looking at it, you can see it has like a little red tinge to it, which I thought was, in, you know, I, I didn't expect the color to be that prominent, you know, and, and it is. Um, and it's definitely something that you could tell a polished bourbon because it's just not sharp on the edges. And a good polished bourbon will bring just a little bit of that note out. Um, and I, I'm impressed with what the team did with it. It's got a it's very, very sweet. Good. It's got a very sweet taste. Um, it's a lower proof, 90 proof on here. But um, yeah, I I told you you would like this one. It's very nice. This is the first one I tried out of the two experimental series, and I really enjoyed the wine barrel one. So, and I think the lower Ooh. proof helps bring out the wine characteristics. Yeah, it's uh, I, I don't know how to describe the taste, but it's different than like anything obviously we've else that we've had today. Like, I'm not refined enough in my palate to just describe it, but it noticeably, noticeably different flavor. I'm not sure why I'm getting this, but this tastes hotter than even the the higher proof stuff that we were drinking tonight. I'm not yeah. sure why. Oh wow! I was gonna say I'm not. I'm not I'm not sure why, but it has a nice sweetness. The The finish isn't too long on it. It's like a nice finish. You know, sometimes you get that burn all the way mm-hmm. in the back of the tongue. But it, it's Yeah, it's a very short finish. That's yeah, what polishing yeah. any bourbon will do, it's, do it's, for you. It's not that bad. Right. I like it. it. I'm trying to think of the right words to describe it. Like, it's not bitter, but bitter. Like, if that, maybe I don't know. Like, have you But ever, I like it. Have it's you ever had, like, a wine-finished uh, bourbon? I mean, if we've had one on the show, that's about it. I don't. We've I can't, had, yeah, we've the had port, like the port, the port or the sherry. But I feel even like, that was a different flavor. Uh, it, it's. I like it. I'm not saying it's bad. I just. I 
if you've tasted something and you don't know how to describe it, that's the <laughs> feeling. You're like, I don't know if I would describe something I've tasted in the past that I'm trying to remember as bitter. right, like it's bitter. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> that's the only well, not thing bitter, like, but bitter. Like, and also, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, not bitter, <laughs> but bitter. So, here's but a, a good way, like a t- maybe tart quote, is the word that's I was a quote looking for. Tart. Here, here's the yeah. thing. Yes, tart. I think is the word you're looking for. It's yes. like a tart, abrupt, kind yeah, of end to it. As opposed to bitter, but bitter, you can get a little. What do you mean by that? You can get a little. You know <laughs> what? What do you mean by that? I can kind of maybe that bitterness. I can kind of explain that maybe a little bit. I think you get a little bitter, grapey taste. So, um, and I feel like this is a great out of the four, as we're nearing the end of like the show a and everything. Sour. Yeah, no, a bit, tart, I, I tart, a, is tart, tart, tart is what tart, I was looking for. Tarts are good. Once I once I said it, I finally was able to. That yeah. make you know what that makes sense, and I feel like of all the bottles that we've drank already, I feel like this is a good one to sort of soften the palate and kind of either you could have either started with this one or ended with one, and I think it's a good good one to end on. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a great wind down. Yeah, it definitely. <laughs> See what you did there. <laughs> it, 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 it actually, Bingo. <laughs> it actually definitely um, it kind of tones down the har- I won't say the harshness because those are higher proofs, but not as harsh. But I think it's a good way to. Is an easy drinker. Oh, yeah, this is the sure. easy sipper for sure. And like a lot of people, when they when they have wine or a finished product, or they try a finished product for the first time, they don't take into account what the profile of that grape was. If it's going to be a yeah. wine finish, or a port finish, or a stout finish. If you had a stout, sure, you know what a stout characteristic is like. If you haven't drank in Cab Franc before. Then you don't really know what the profile would be. Yeah, right? I'm not a big wine drinker, so yeah, maybe that's here. the thing yeah. that is throwing me for a loop. But it's it's like there's fruits that you when you hear fruit you think a sweet sugary flavor, but there's also tart fruits. And then once I finally set it, it is yeah. what able to like I was able to tie to it. It took me a minute to get to there. Yeah, is it that's a dessert delicious. wine? Yeah. Is it a like a dry wine? Yeah, yeah that that's, makes a difference. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. The fun thing is drinking those two next to each other, two experimental labels, because it's the exact same bourbon. Exact same bourbon, just finished <laughs> finished in two in different, different yeah, 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 just two barrels. It's just, really it's makes amazing. A difference. It's, it's difference. amazing the yes. difference. Fant- it, it, I actually really like this uh, a lot. It, Listen, I have to throw this out there. I would definitely prefer the stout, personally, because I think that stout you got something there, man. And I think you should definitely think of a way and, and put a way to get that in the seven fifties. It, it might be a staple. That is good, man. That's the purpose of the experiment. That's good, right? man. You know? Well, it, in my mind, the experiment should be finished. The <laughs> the, the, done. Done. The Great staple. success. We, we ended the label. <laughs> yes. The experiment is over. Try the stout. At number two. We call this the Jerry special now. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm torn because you know the what? The down to her stout. <laughs> I, I'm, I so, I'm so torn because both of these you could definitely make into a 750 and they'd, they'd sell. They're they're both great. The more you drink it, the more you want, and you could definitely easily take down a bottle. Are we calling this down to finish instead of down to herf? Down, <laughs> down to finish. <laughs> All right. Down to finish. Down to finish every bottle on every on show. <laughs> We're gonna have uh, Brett come in and do the the frat boy herf. Ooh, that's gonna be later on next year. That's uh, he's gonna run after dark summertime. Yeah, <laughs> we're streaking the Jerry birthday special. <laughs> hey. Oh my god, we're just gonna have on a whole line of DTH shows. I'm a this. little concerned about our bet now with Caleb. Oh, <laughs> our uh, Super I'm Bowl not, bet. Our Super Bowl I'm bet. Not buying this guy like a seventy-five dollar bottle. I know it sucks. I'm not. I'm it's not nothing. excited about it. I mean, Josh Allen's a, hurting right now. It, it was a fun lost bet. Two I mean, it was a fun bet. Lost two divisional You've games. You've heard the bet, right? No. no. If okay. the Bills go to the Super Bowl, they don't have okay. to win. They just they have don't to have go. to. They, have, they just have to go. Okay. Caleb on the show has to get any haircut that we pick. Ooh. And they picked out oh, yeah. a good one. And Hold it, on. You've we're, already picked it out. The Friar Tuck. Oh. <laughs> oh yes. We're gonna give him the Friar Tuck on yes. the show. Wow. Because right. you're a Pats fan, right? That's right. That's rough. Yeah, this year it's rough. Yeah. So we were gonna yeah. give him the fryer talk, but now Allen's hurting, and I'm like, Fuck. and so. But if the Bills don't go to the Super Bowl, I have to buy him a bottle of his choosing, no more than a hundred dollars. Now it's like one hundred five. I'm not gonna be a cheap fuck, but. And I yeah. told him he could go through my humidor, and he can pick out any cigar he wants. I thought oh, you said any two. Ooh, oh, any trade. two, <laughs> any two. But listen, you got I some have bangers. I have some yeah. cigars in there that are they're irreplaceable. 
like one of like a hundred cigars. They're they're just gone. You could never get it again. Well, so I told him he could get any two. I told him I'd give him one hour to sit up there with a phone, <laughs> do some research, on, do some research. <laughs> like where, like where does he have to smoke the cigar though? Does it no. have to be here? Wherever, wherever he wants. He wants. To be here. Oh, all right. For He's going to smoke that him. on the afterhurf to glow <laughs> oh, yeah. while for drinking sure. his bottle. <laughs> would, would would you? Absolutely. Yeah. I, Where I, else I would you him. rather smoke that? Yeah, but you know what, Gio? That's why I got to start smoking all the really good shit right now. So, <laughs> so he He's going to get back to the humidor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gonna... He's like, uh, there's only backwoods in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's one pack of backwoods. All, all... No, I got three. I got, I got the one back here. I got this little tabletop. I have the giant Yeti cooler just filled to the brim. I couldn't fit another cigar in there if I tried. Damn. And then I have another one of those. So uh, all those are going to be smoked by the time this bet occurs. Yeah. I got. <laughs> I, you notice I've been trying to get rid of them all, right? And, and But, Gio, I, I know a place, and if you if it comes down to a bottle price, I'll make sure you get my price on a bottle. So it won't, it won't hurt you too deep. Listen, Jerry's going to start. And, that's a bet. So. And, and you know what? We'll all share it together. So... Jerry's going to sound like the grandmother from Dinosaurs. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Got the smoker's voice. Do you have to actively root against the Bills then? Or is it more like... He's a Patriots fan. So you already actively root He hates the Bills. Well, so you hate I, the Bills? I don't hate them. I, You know, I have three fantasy football teams, and Josh Allen is my quarterback on three out of the four because he is like the next upcoming GOAT besides Tom Brady, um, which I also That's have on... <laughs> which I also, which I also have Tom Brady on two out of the four teams as well. Yeah, how are those teams doing? <laughs> Actually, I'm all about like five and four, four and five. So. <laughs> but um, to give you perspective, here's one of our little reels we made of one of Jerry's humidors. So, are you a Zappy or are you a Jones fan? <laughs> um, you know what? I'm liking Zappy, but Jesus. it's such a hard competition. I feel like you got to let Jones play it out. Those are all some of those. You got to see like what you're working with. It's, uh, it's tough right now. Especially but, um, in that scheme. Get smoking. Bro. Yeah, they're both. I they told you scheme. I was a collector. They fit the yeah. scheme. So I don't know. They both fit the scheme. I don't know what's going to go on with their injuries and Belichick, the receivers. They got great running backs. They got to get the ball to the receivers. They can't do it right now. True. Um, I, I did pick up Jacoby Myers. Yeah, yeah he's their one <laughs> superstar receiver. Ramondre. And Ramondre, yeah, he's. He's their go at running back right now, man. Listen, I had Harris on both my fantasy teams. Hurt. In the last couple of weeks. What it's better get? for Stevenson, obviously. What yeah. do you got for your <laughs> cigar review, my friend? All right, so cigar review, man. I got appearance, given the that we got the box, given the yellow cello and the aged eight years, I'm giving this a 9.25. What? Yeah. What kind? Why? Why? When? Why? The first... Point two of all time. No, I've given a point two five out before. It's a when? weird fractional thing. This right is now. some bullshit. I have, I don't recall this. You have all your reviews. When's the other point two five ever? Do I got to scroll? I'm, must, I'm must have been, with, must I'm have with been one of you the want recent me to, ones. You want no, me to scroll? Just continue. All right, all right. Go ahead. Burn. I'll give I it to you. Burn. I gave an eight point five. I only relit it one time. Construction nine point five. It held up the whole time. Ash when I wanted to. This was a great smoke. Uh, smoky as hell. Um, this is smoky cigar. Uh, draw. I, I got gave two it, filters in here. It's still <laughs> a little smoky. Draw. I gave it a V cut. It smoked excellent. Every puff of smoke was great. Big fat clouds all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Ripping vapes over Bruh, here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you guys are gonna kill me for this enjoyment. Nine point two five as well. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> New What's rule. Total? <laughs> Going <laughs> forward, there's no more .25. Only halves. No, no halves, .25s. Only halves, 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 halves or holes. Or holes. Wait, so yeah. I can't give up .75 out there? <laughs> Go on. What's the final? So my, <laughs> fi- only. So my final was a 45.5, which is a 91 overall. So um, I, I feel like if we didn't wait eight years to smoke these, um, probably could have gone a little higher. Gio, do you have yours done? Yes. All right. Okay, so appearance, <laughs> Sorry, I gave yeah. this an 8.5. If these weren't aged as long as they were, it probably would have gotten eight, but I love some yellow cello when I get it, and it's from, you know, just the cigar doing its thing sitting in a box of cedar. Burn, I gave this an 8.5. This was definitely one of the better cigars as far as staying lit. You know, we talk a lot. We have a good time. Sometimes you forget to take the puffs needed. A little long-winded. Yeah. Construction. This thing was damn near perfect, but you 
it's very hard to give out a 10 on construction. So 9.5 ash when I wanted. I probably could have got, you know, a nice like three inch ash on this thing if I really tried. Draw, I gave it a nine. I had zero issues with that. I also V cut. And then enjoyment, I gave this a nine as well. And this brought me to an 89 overall. Not bad from you. That's Harsh a good Raider score. here. That's a good score for GM. All right, listen. You shit on the, the, the tens. I actually gave a ten in this review. Oh. Oh. So the appearance, I gave it a nine. I'm a sucker for a nice slant arrow. Uh, the burn, I gave it an eight. Incredible. Barely touched it up. Uh, nice, even. No boating, no canoeing, none of that bullshit. Uh, construction, I gave it a ten, man. The thing just... It was... It, it's perfect, man. It's a perfect cigar. Eight years it's been sitting there, just waiting for this moment to get its 10. It got it. I mean... The draw, nine, perfect. Smoked, it's smoky cigar, got the smoke when I wanted it. Perfect. I mean, the thing is just great. Uh, overall enjoyment, I gave it a nine, bringing me to a 45.90 overall. It's definitely one of the highest ratings we've had. I mean, this thing... Yeah. Caleb got a winner. I think this might be Caleb's best pick. Look it. We'll give you this Yay. moment, Caleb. Yeah. I what don't. I, I really don't do much right on the show or any good <laughs> at all in life. But you, you know, know what? what? This cigar this got you minus one, bruh. Uh, so does that give me bruh, one? Bruh. <laughs> I might have one, one minus, bruh. No, I gave you a couple during the show. All right, so maybe like two. Maybe. 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 maybe I, maybe. I started off at negative one. So Brett, what did you think of the cigar? I liked it being a very noob to like, I know a little bit about cigars smoked. Well, touched it up twice just because I was talking long winded. Uh, it's part of the, part re- of the game, man. Reminded me, of, <laughs> <laughs> reminded me of a, like a McAuliffe cigar. Cause it's super smoky. Um, yeah. McAuliffe cigars really are smoky. Very smoky. You remember when we did yeah. the oh, Leanda? Oh yeah. The yeah. Leanda yeah. one. Smoked out. It was yeah. just, yeah. it was just us and fucking OG Bobby white 69. Yeah. <laughs> Billy white. Billy, Billy. Or Billy that white. Dude, yeah, OG Billy white 69. That dude was super cool. Yeah. Well the whole fucking, this whole place this is before we got a second filter. So we're like, what? <laughs> My eyes are watering. <laughs> where are you? Bill? <laughs> where are you, Bill? Bill, where are you at? <laughs> Uh, the I'm enjoyment. Over here, Caleb. <laughs> the enjoyment was a ten because I'm with you guys. Hey. I like the uh, oh, this guy. Oh, how about this guy? I like the uh, the whole atmosphere. Mr. So, uh, Sentimental. Hey, butter me up some it more. Is. Uh, I'll give it a, a ninety-two. Oh, right. I know. The last time I was on here, I we gave got that one. Cigar we got we got to get review. Justin's thoughts on it, and then we'll talk about what Half Wheel said. Sure. Uh, What'd you think of it, man? I'm, again, I'm also an amateur to the cigar world. Sure. Uh, Tommy from uh, Nickel City kind of got me into him more and more. It's great going over there, by the way. Just insanity. I had to pick up some, some cigars for my brother's bachelor party. I'm like, dude, I, I need 10 minutes. I just want in and out. He talked to me for like 45 minutes. He couldn't stop talking about the cigars. <laughs> he, he does like, love the, like, love the Don't ask Tommy for a recommendation. He'll be there for 45 minutes. He will also, learn. Yeah. big sponsor of the show. Yeah, he, it's it's big, incredible. He sponsors our bourbon. So that's awesome. So, anyways, it, uh, yeah, I loved it. I did have to relight it a couple times. I think it's because of talking and asking the questions or answering the questions. So, um, no, it was a great, 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 great draw. Thanks, appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Uh, Half Wheel gave this what a ninety-three. Yeah, so we're right on par. Yeah, right on. So half and that Wheel was is... that was eight years ago. Yeah. We're actually smoking the original run. I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in the beginning. The last five, right? Yeah. Last five in the store. Last five of an original so run. These came out in August of 2015, and you know, obviously, I'm sure, we were completely all different people back then. Yeah, <laughs> different world. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, these things aged fantastically. Illusion, you know, they're a very big boutique company, like. I guess you could call it a big boutique company. I mean, they're definitely a name in the industry. I mean, we've only smoked two of their cigars on the show. You know, this makes me want to smoke more of their stuff. I'll tell you that much. I was sleeping on them because of that Candela. Yeah. The 88 was not it. I saw the yellow, and I thought you guys were, like, you were going to be ready for it. I I think you have another one, though, still. In, did you, the ones I got from San Antonio, I think you might still have yeah, one. Yeah, I have a TAA, I think. Uh, with the did s- we smoke that? No, I know I smoked, smoked mine. Them. Then we smoked them. We smoke everything together. 
Yeah. So like when we went, I went to San Antonio and like I was down there and tobacco in Texas is not tobacco in New York, obviously. What cigars would have cost like almost two fifty here was like yo, I just got like two hundred fifty dollars worth of cigars for like ninety bucks. I brought you a little care package, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> it was like nothing. It's That's a awesome. it's a different world. And it was, I really enjoyed it. It had a really crazy wrapper. It was like some silver foil to it, but it was only like half rolled. It, it was cool. We'll have to definitely like get more into this brand and explore some more maybe of their LE stuff, which is probably <coughs> the last me. thing I need is more limited edition habits. <laughs> uh, don't don't yeah. you lie. Like, That's why you're. Uh, I, I'm done. Bu- I'm done buying business. them. Oh yeah, well, right. never mind. Tat's to, got a new LE coming out money. this month. <laughs> do, do originals in the cigar world do, do, are they, is it a, like a parody to like the bourbon world like a lot of times when you have a first release or it, it's 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 ultimately it's better because as it gets more gets more popular they start to lower the age proof to get more out like what's happening with blantons right now mm-hmm. it's completely changing profiles is the same true for cigars or is is there any rhyme or reason well, my answer would be it depends on the brand. So, okay. like, you have, like, Arturo Fuente, which is, like, the king of cigars. Like, when they say they make this thing once a year, it is going to taste the same or better than the previous year. Okay. Because they are the, you know, their opus line is fields upon fields that, you know, you've got a farmer tending to individual leaves. Like, the level of craftsmanship that goes into, like... So they're not squeezing in filler to meet yeah. demand. Correct. Okay. Like, yeah. there's a they, reason they, they get have the different plots of tobacco for different. Yeah. The you soil know, is for, different. All the of soil's that. different. The some of it's grown in shade only, no sun. So like, a, so they stay the, true to what that profile yeah, is supposed correct. to be. Okay. Like once they master a blend, and if it's like something that everyone's like, "Wow, this is incredible." Yeah. It's so incredible that they can make it taste the same or better year in and year out. It's just like making like a whiskey. A, yeah, but it like, is like a whiskey. You may like all right, think how McDonald's makes the Big Mac taste the same no matter where you get it in the country, but it tastes like a Delmonico steak every time. Yeah, like, you're able to refine it because the soil, right? For yeah. for cigars. Yeah. Bourbon the only thing that you can really kind of replicate is the position that the barrel is in well I, I, it's in, not so much about the replication it's about that to meet demand in the last 10 years they've been cutting well, a lot of things well they've been, they took the, all the age statements off yeah. a lot of the products and they've dropped it a couple of years without t- look at the weller line yep they, they dropped it without telling people they're dropping it and it's becoming an inferior product to years past to the originals to meet exactly, demand yeah, yeah. i it would be, say it's different in the cigars well just they just added a whole new still so in the well, next ten years, yeah. we should be seeing <clears throat> maybe uh, double the amount. I'm saying well, they all. Hey, yeah. it's, it's, we're supposed to be seeing more. It, we'll it, see if they keep the same market. If they go international, more international than well, the overseas gonna, market's blown up. Yeah, yeah. So the demand in in Asia is, is insane. The right? Japanese and Chinese, like as far as American products go, one they will outspend us. Yeah, like right. people who have money there aren't afraid to buy, for example, a $3,000 box of OG Franks. No. I, but, uh, the top 10 liquor companies in the world, there's only one bourbon manufacturer in that top 10 list, and it's barely in the top 10. It's Jim Beam. Yeah. yeah. Barely. Yeah, yep. Barely. The rest is like a Chinese uh, liquor. There's like the top five is Chinese, and you get Indian, and then there's like two Japanese and maybe one... Um, I want to say it's European, like Spanish. But the and, trend in the last 10 yeah. years has been more American whiskey. Yep. Yeah. And so you, and, you might get more product, but you might not. And we, as far as sheer demand. numbers. Listen, I did the tour this summer and I was assured. Yeah, assured. By some <laughs> uh, some old woman who gave us the tour, Buffalo so, Trace, that there would be more products so out there you for think, us. From the cigar enthusiasts to from the whiskey enthusiasts you have to look at the two last big purchases out of so wild turkey bought um wilderness trail campari bought wilderness trail like 70 percent of it that's 700 million dollars 
because they need more product. They have the facilities to produce a shit ton of whiskey. Right. In their press release, they said yep. it was for more premium product to distribute internationally. Yep. That's a question that I had in the back of my mind for you. Do you think this is going to affect Wilder's Trail barrel picks going into the future? So they ended the bourbon barrel picks, and they are keeping in line with the rye barrel picks. They ended the barrel barrel picks? Yeah. Like so permanently, or is this just like a for, stay? For the foreseeable future. Whoa. Yeah. Um, but they also... Go get that Bubblicious. Yes. <laughs> if you can find <laughs> it. I've been find trying it. a goddamn... <laughs> I'm about to save these Rick and Morty bottles. When I was there in last year, they had a complete half side of the Rick house full of these... They, on the mast, on the head of the barrel, it was OFW, and I asked them what those were for. They said it was meant for an international market. Yeah. But I was like, hey, what are you guys going to do with them? They're like, we don't know because the imports and the tariffs OFW, right now. the old yeah. first ward. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Um, but they were meant for the international market. That's probably what they're going to be pushing those barrels for. Mm -hmm. But they're one of the biggest contract distillers other than Bardstown right now, other than the big conglomerates. So where are all those companies going to go for their bourbon? Well, we're going to see a lot of independence i'd like to say campari if you're listening <laughs> to hartman hartman's is uh... there we go <laughs> yeah. well, I, can, I can see a lot sitting of on a small stock i can see a lot of independence going away if they don't have a still or they're gonna sign or find outside sources like middle west which is a big contract distiller out of uh columbus ohio um you have i think woodenville's contract <sighs> distilling i want to say old elk might be contract distilling a little bit but i don't think they have the facilities Right. Yeah. Um, you just seen Balconies get bought up by Diageo. Right. Um, they're big single malt guys. That's going to be, I think, a lot of that stock that a lot of people don't buy here. A lot of that stuff sits on the shelves here. Yeah. That it's might done. get shipped overseas. They, they've leaned heavy into that single malt. Yeah. And, yeah. As they and, should. It was a great product. And they get good turnaround, too. Yeah. So, like, in a, when we were talking to Aaron from um, Smoke Wagon, um, when I met Hopper that night, um, pretty much he was saying... When he gets a barrel, some of his stuff only lasts for six months in the rickhouse before it's burnt out. So about a heat. Yeah, that's a Texas heat too. So yeah. you're gonna think of, if you're thinking about it logically, you're gonna see a lot of that Texas stuff or Texas distilled stuff get moved somewhere else. Garrison Brother might not be a big staple in the U.S. anymore. It yeah. might be a big staple like what Amrut is in um, India. I know Milliman Green said they were having issues like that because yeah. they do a lot of their finishing in Texas in the Rick houses and they lose a lot of product. They do. They're all going to come up to the north or northeast, northwest. Yeah. Get those. So, uh, so you're seeing like the cooler new, temperatures. The new Miami. Yeah. Yes. Well, of bourbon or whiskey got, in general. You got like <laughs> Driftless Glen and I'm using them as a, as a small um, kind of example, but I go to Wisconsin a lot. They're in Baraboo, Wisconsin, out of the way. They contract is still for people now they're building a shit ton of rick houses in wisconsin they're i think they're projected another 15 rick houses and they went from a 25 gallon barrel which is what is that not st the the industry standard anymore it's 53 ga gallons they moved all the 53 gallon stuff and they're not even meeting demand on what they already have yeah i mean the other thing too is you have to look there's another market that it's going to sound crazy, but the Middle East is going to eventually get to that point. Like, you think the Middle East because they don't really drink because of, you know, Islamic faith. But right, yeah. the UAE, Dubai, these places where they're places of excess. and They'll bring it in for tourists. Yeah, well, they, they that, cater to Americans. And on top of that, yeah. they have more money than they know what to do with. So yeah. they have a public... And no, look, they're just buying all of our golfers, too. Dubai, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> but no. We need like, you. So they have a public entertainment fund. Their public entertainment fund's budget is worth more than, like, the U.S., like, GDP. Like, <laughs> it's like a... F it, they're worth more money than, like, Elon Musk's net worth. And he's the richest man in the world. Like... Yeah. They can buy whatever they want. Like, there's a reason why, like, WWE gets, like, paid to go to do an event in Saudi Arabia because right. they're just like, oh, all right. Well, yeah, we'll take your billion dollars. Like, right. UFC was there a couple times, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Well, Fight Island. Not many people an know. island. <laughs> so not many people like, know this. Hey, but man, fuck COVID. We're just going to build an island <laughs> and you're going to still fight. Yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> you, you said a billion dollars, right? Okay, I'm in. Yeah, but what we'll people bring don't, everyone. It's funny with the UFC. Like, 
not a lot of people know this, but before they were sold to WME, there were the Fertitta brothers who owned Station Casinos that were the the and like their uh, Tillman Fertitta's their cousin, the one who owns the Houston Rockets. The minority owners of the UFC were like the Saudi government. Come on. So they have these ties there that they call this chic up and is like, hey, we kind of need a place to make some money. They're like, how soon do you need it built? <laughs> like, <laughs> I remember watching the video that like Dana White was doing in for Fight Island. Yeah. His like little hotel room is like a city block. There's there's like a whole bar of a gym that is like LA fitness on steroids for just him. Like we are talking people that have more money than God. Like that. If they're like, all right, you, how soon do you need it? All right. We can do it in this amount of time. All right, cool. All right. See you in three months. Yeah. And you know, some crazy slave labor will build a fucking stadium in three months. I heard uh, uh, something. Cause I was listening to bourbon pursuit probably a few weeks, actually the last few days. And they said something really interesting. MGPI, or now it's Ross and Squibb. MGPI is Ross and Squibb now. They're not going to buy up companies that they distribute to and sell to because it's not in their interest to do that. Right. So they're going to keep those pipelines open. But anybody that contract distills, like those medium-sized things, they said that they'll get bought up. That makes a lot of sense. So... Five hundred million dollar acquisitions, seven hundred million dollar acquisitions. That's that looks like the jump. We're gonna have to bring you guys on to uh, talk about that shit one of these days. Yeah, part two and part three in the barrel room. Yeah, and, yeah in, the barrel room. in the barrel room with the photo from Buffalo sixty six. Yeah, <laughs> autograph too. Oh. All right, yeah. hey, if you get a photo of that blown up oh, with them there, oh. that would be amazing. I already made a mental note. <laughs> Guest of honor. Wow. But uh, just to give you an idea, so I just had to look it up. The Saudi Public Investment Fund. I want you to think how much it's worth over under right now. Say the dollar amount, and I'll tell you this: it's worth more than what Elon Musk is worth. Seventy billion. <laughs> I don't know. Musk More. is worth like 170 billion. I don't so know. I'm going to say 500 billion dollars. 200 bill. Is this like Price is Right? I'm going to go 499. <laughs> <laughs> you were one. actually the closest. It's 430 billion dollars. Justin, come on down. <laughs> ding 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 ding. I might not he's, know Susan B. Anthony. He's back gosh. in the U.S. <laughs> so just think of what 430 billion dollars buys. That's the, world. Yeah. <laughs> the world. Yeah. The world. All right. Listen. Every football stadium in America. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, I want to take this opportunity to shout out our sponsors of our show. Nickel City Cigars, Nickel City Club. Use code DTH24, 20% off your entire order. Exclusions do apply. Uh, I want to shout out Smokers Haven of Western New York, New York, uh, upstate New York's oldest tobacconist. Um, check them out. And that being said, I do want to thank Justin for being here. I do want to thank Brett for being here. Thanks for having me. Thanks, fellas. Yep. I hope you guys had a good time with us. Uh, Great time. I would love to do further stuff with you guys. So, uh, it Sounds was good. Barrel, Part two, coming barrel, to the barrel room. Barrel, Part two. <laughs> barrel picks, whatever you guys are trying to do, man. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in for all of it. So Definitely. Fantastic. So, that being said, does anybody have any closing notes? Well, actually, I want to give the floor real quick to Justin. Justin, you want to you want to shout out Hartman's anything you want to plug any of your handles. This is your minute. This give your commercial. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, just come check us out, fifty five Chicago Street. We got a couple of great events coming up and a couple of uh, new products in the works. Uh, the most the uh, one uh, is coming in two weeks is our barrel proof bourbon allocation will be coming out uh, the week of Thanksgiving. Three yeah. bottles per store, and they usually go fast. Awesome. Thanks for having us on, guys. Absolutely, it, dude. Uh, for right. a Buffalo bourbon enthusiast, uh, we are a Facebook group, uh, mainly ran on Facebook for our picks. We also have our Instagram, Buffalo Bourbon Enthusiasts. And uh, if you have any questions, just send us an email at Buffalo Bourbon 121253 at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, thanks for having us on, fellas. Absolutely, guys. Appreciate you guys. Adios, Smoke everybody. Got Later, fellas. Take care.